Thank you for joining us for this video presentation today. I'm Laura Drabik, Chief Evangelist at GuideWare, and we're gonna do something a little different in this session. We have a special guest we'd like to welcome to Connections Reimagined, Stephen Van Bellaham, a recognized industry thought leader and best-selling author who focuses on the future of the customer experience. Stephen's new book, The Offer You Can't Refuse, looks at how popular consumer technologies have set a new bare minimum for customer expectations and up the ante on what it takes to compete in a rapidly evolving marketplace. Today, Stephen will share what this means for the insurance industry specifically, including two big ideas for creating meaningful differentiation for your brand. And I'll be on hand to share how Guidewire empowers our customers to do just that. Thanks for joining us, Stephen. Thank you, Laura. It is a pleasure to be here at this virtual event of Guidewire. And I'm very much looking forward to share some ideas about the future of customer experience for the insurance industry. Now, if we look at what happened in 2020, some people will say this is the year of COVID-19. I tend to call this the year of the biggest digital training course the world has ever seen. And I don't need to explain this to anyone because every aspect of our life has now a digital component. And I mean, just, just ask yourself this. If you look outside today and if you look at the world, do you still see the entire world? I don't think so. I think you see part of the world because there's this big invisible layer of digital technologies that's flying on top of us. And it's changing the way that companies interact with their customers. And because of that, I think we're in a new phase right now. Um, in the past, we talked about digital versus analog. We talked about online versus offline. I don't think we need to do this anymore. Today, we live in this hybrid world. And that means that every interaction that a company has with their customers will have a digital component. And the cool thing is, this is no longer the exclusive right of the big technology companies. Like, take McDonald's. McDonald's is a fantastic company. It has been around for decades, and in the last few years, they've been through a fantastic transformation. I think most of you have seen this. And now they're going to take it one step further. And their secret weapon in this evolution is their app. Now, the McDonald's app is one of the most successful and the most used corporate apps in the world, like in my country, Belgium. We only have 11 million people living in our country and more than 1.5 million are actually using it. It's one of the most successful apps. And because of its success, they can now start the circle of life of artificial intelligence. They have this great product, they attract many users, these users generate data, and this data allows them again to optimize their services. Now, McDonald's made an acquisition about a year ago. They bought a company called Dynamic Yield, which is an artificial intelligence and machine learning company based in New York. And they're gonna combine the software of this company with the data from their app to completely reinvent the experience of the drive-thru. Today, if you go to a drive-thru of McDonald's, in most of the time, the experience is exactly the same as it was 20 years ago. You go to the drive-thru, they have a menu that is the same for all of us because they use averages, um, which of course is a proxy to reality. And McDonald's knows this, and pretty soon they will change this. In the near future, when you go to a drive-thru of McDonald's, they will have a personalized menu which means that, for instance, if you are a vegetarian, you will have the vegetarian options on top. You will no longer need to look for them at the bottom of the menu. And you will feel welcome because of that. Maybe you will even buy more because of this. This is a personalized service. But I love this example because it is a perfect description of the hybrid world that we're living in. It's an offline experience to go to McDonald's, but they add this invisible digital layer on top of it that changes the experience completely for the customer. Now, if you ask me what started in March 2020, um, it's like we stepped into a time machine and we woke up in March 2030 in means of uh, digital usage. We had this leap frog, we jumped like crazy to a new era in terms of digital usage. And as a consequence, um, digital convenience has become a commodity. If you have it, fine but customers feel it's the most natural thing in the world. If you don't have it, you're in deep trouble. So today it's more a negative differentiator than a positive differentiator, and we need to live with that. And in my opinion, customers these days, they have expectations that go beyond convenience. And that's what my two big ideas of this presentation are about. I think there are two ways how an insurance company can differentiate itself today to win the heart and the business of customers. 
and knowing that people expect more than just convenience. And to better understand that, I would like to invite you to think about this. If you think about your customers, ask yourself, what are the scarce resources that they have? I'm sure all of you think time. Time is the scarcest resource of most people, and I fully agree. Time is an important part of our life, and usually we don't have enough of it. But there are two other items in our life, resources in our life, that, that are pretty scarce for us. Huh? We have time, money, and energy. Most people that I meet would like to have more time, more money, more energy. There are not that many people that have enough of these three. So the question to you guys is, to what extent are you managing this? Are you an insurance company that is saving time for customers, saving money, giving energy? Or are you an energy taker, a time taker, a money taker? Ask yourself this. Uh, maybe Starbucks is so successful because they're trying to give energy to people. AliExpress is so successful because they are so cheap. And about 65% of the US population is a client of Amazon Prime. Why? Because it saves you time, money, and energy. How is this in your organization? This is really important to know. Because if we think about offering value that goes beyond convenience, it's about understanding the time consuming, the money consuming, and the energy consuming aspects in people's lives. It's about understanding the human behind the customer. Now, let me give you an example. There's this healthcare insurance company called Oscar. I'm sure you're familiar with it. During the great lockdown in New York, there was scarcity for many people to have access to healthcare professionals. And as you know, it's very expensive to go to a doctor. So these guys solved this for their clients. They were like, okay, if you need to have a conversation with a doctor, we're gonna take care of that for you. Within 15 minutes, we're gonna give you access to a doctor and it's gonna be completely for free. Or if you need a refill for your medication, if you have a chronic disease, for instance, we're gonna take care of that without any cost. At a moment like this, with these kind of services, you are adding value to people's lives. You're saving time, money, and energy from them. And I really believe that we're gonna see a flip in the next few years where companies don't just focus on the customer journey anymore, but also focus on the life journey. A customer journey is about optimizing the transactional part of the relationship. A life journey is about optimizing the emotional part of a relationship. And it's about understanding the human behind the customer and acting upon that. Now, let me give you an example of another insurance company, a company called Central Beheer, which is part of the Acmea Group, and they're based in the Netherlands in Europe. Now, this is an insurance company that is obsessed with customers. They want to have a net promoter score of plus 50, which is unusual in the industry, but they're very close to achieving this. And their strategy is that they want to offer services to customers that, goes, that go beyond selling them insurance products. Of course, they have good insurance products. Of course, they try to do their claim handling as good as possible, but they go beyond this. They want to be a partner in life. They want to be a partner for people in their house, a partner in sustainable living. And you know, on their website, everyone in the Netherlands can order and buy solar panels now because they know that many people in the Netherlands would like to have solar panels, but they also know that it's a big hustle for a lot of people to get them. So they created this interface, which is as convenient as Netflix or Amazon. You just type in your address. With Google technology, they screen your roof in real time. They scan your roof in real time, I mean, and then you get a real time proposal. And a couple of days later, they come to your house and they install these solar panels. And you can ask yourself, why would an insurance company do this? Well, first of all, they want to be this partner in sustainable living. But next to that, just think about the data that these guys have. In the last two years, they had about 5,000 claims of customers that were dissatisfied about their supplier of solar panels. So these guys are best placed in the country to know which suppliers to trust and which suppliers you cannot trust. And they use that knowledge to offer additional services to their clients. But they go beyond this. They have this thing called Plus help, which is like an Uber for chores, which is perfect for me. Like I am, I have two left hands. I can't do anything in the house. I'm sure of everyone who's watching now, I have the two biggest left hands in, in the audience, in the world probably. So for me, this is paradise. And when I have to replace a light bulb, for instance, something I cannot do, then I use their app of this insurance company. I push a few buttons and they send someone to my house to fix it the same day, which is brilliant. They add value in my life. And the cool thing is, this is not a free service. They ask money for this. It's a business model for them. And another cool thing is, 
This is not just open for their insurance customers. They open this for everyone in the country. And what they see is that about 50% of the people who use these services are non-insurance clients. So you can imagine the value that this brings to their business. They understand the human behind the customer and they want to become a partner in life. This is the first big idea that I want to share with you guys, how you can differentiate yourself. Um, Laura, I would like to give the word back to you to see how Guidewire can actually help companies to implement this idea into the real world. Laura, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stephen. You're so right. When digital convenience is just the cost of entry, understanding the human behind the customer is the key to creating meaningful differentiation and building deeper, more profitable customer relationships. Do it right and PNC insurers can shift from protection-based insurance to engagement-based insurance. They can become those partners in life through personalized services that save customers time, money, and energy on an ongoing basis. For every insurer, the single best chance to become a partner in living starts when the relationship does, and underwriting. But how do you get a high-fidelity understanding of the customer at first contact? right from the get-go. Our own solution, Guidewire Cloud, makes it easy. By leveraging big data, predictive analytics, and machine learning, we give you an accurate understanding of risk so you can engage customers with personalized coverage that's priced accordingly. And we do it instantly, on demand. Traditionally, underwriters have had to rely on lost history and tribal knowledge. They've had to hone their detective skills to track down data that's locked in silos and hasn't been rationalized and curated. But that just wastes time they just don't have, or they end up making costly mistakes. Guidewire Cloud changes all that by giving you a centralized view of the customer and by delivering the hyper-intelligence you need to make accurate decisions based on true insight instead of intuition. With our new BAMF release, we unlock all that first and second party data within your core systems. And we integrate it with data from Guidewire's risk listening engine called Science, our exclusive internet scale connection to non-obvious information that would be nearly impossible to obtain otherwise. We then filter it through a predictive analytics engine built specifically for PNC insurers to give you actionable risk and pricing insights the moment you need it. Take Nia here. She's looking for workers' comp insurance for her neighborhood diner. She's busy and wants coverage um, like yesterday. Guidewire pre-fills relevant information so you don't have to ask her endless questions that leave her ready to bolt. In the background, Guidewire assesses hundreds or even thousands of data points from internal and external sources to instantly assign NIA a risk score. We even predict future risks as well as profitability at different price points. Reviewing the underlying data, you see NIA's social media ads touting home delivery in 30 minutes or less is a debit. So is rising crime on her block but her reputation as a conscientious manager who conducts regular safety training is a big plus and none of her employees have ever filed claims. Within moments, you're able to become a real partner to Nia by offering her a policy that covers her needs at a risk appropriate price so she can get back to business and you can reduce loss ratios. That's the power of knowing the human behind the customer better, faster, and easier than ever before possible. Thank you, Laura. So cool to see how you can make everything tangible, how you can make it real. I love these examples. Now, I wanna build upon that. The first big idea was about becoming a partner in life. The second big idea is about how can you add value to society? Um, and we see a flip. In the past, the focus was on authenticity. Today, the focus is on responsibility. The market expects companies to take their responsibility. And let's face it, guys, huh? 2020 is a pretty tough year. There's a lot of, on our plate. We have many challenges that we have to deal with. We have the biggest healthcare crisis in human history and the link this has with the economy. Uh, we have climate change. That is still a big issue. And we have a fight against racism and discrimination. It, there's a lot on our plate. 
And the truth is the market, the customer today, looks at organizations to add value with these challenges. They expect organizations to become part of the solution. And the cool thing is there's a higher level of trust in business leaders to deal with these kind of problems than in government leaders. So they look at you guys, business owners, business leaders, executives, to add value to society. And they expect business leaders to act proactively. 74% of the world's population expects companies to deal with global challenges and don't wait for the government to enforce that to them. They want them to be proactive. Now the question is, can you guys change the world? You have impact on society. An insurance company has a huge impact on society. But the question that I prefer to ask is not, how can you change the world? The question is, how can you change your world? What are the strengths that you have in your organization that you can leverage so you can have a positive impact on society. That is something that I would like you to, to think about. I think that can have a huge impact on the way that our company functions. And if you think, yeah, Stephen, how do I do this? Well, think about this. Ask yourself the question. If we do business with your company, is there a trade-off for the customer? In many industries, for many companies that you do business with, there's this trade-off. Uh, there's the trade-off between convenience and privacy. There's a trade-off between buying a cheap product, but you know that it's not produced in an ethical way. The trade-off between doing things that you like, like traveling, for instance, and knowing that it's bad for the planet. Is there a trade-off in your industry, in your company? And the moment that you can identify this trade-off, that's the moment that you can start to reduce it and eventually eliminate it. And if you think, yeah, is this possible? Yeah. There are many things going on. Let me give you a few simple examples. Take fireworks. A lot of people love fireworks, but we also know that it's bad for animals. Animals are afraid of it or they become aggressive. Can we solve this trade-off? Yes, we can. Today we have these miniature drones that you can send up in the sky by the thousands and they can create a fantastic light and sound spectacle. Maybe the, the quality of the storytelling is even better than with fireworks, but the downside for the animals is completely gone. That trade-off is removed. Let's take another example. When you travel, you like to take a lot of stuff with you. As a consequence, your suitcases are becoming really heavy. And we know that is bad for the, the health of the people who work in that industry. Can we solve this? Yes, we can. Delta Airlines is now working with exoskeletons. So the teams that work with the luggage, they get this robot suit on and it gives them superpowers and they can lift heavy suitcases without having pain in their back or in their muscles. And to be honest, I tried it out myself. It's really cool because they give you this robot suit and the moment they turn the machine on, you instantly become Superman. And I, I lift here a suitcase of about 30 kilos, 50 pounds. And when I lift it, it's like lifting a piece of paper. It's like lifting a feather. It is amazing. But because of this, the trade-off is completely gone. Last example I want to give you. I'm not a vegetarian. I like to eat meat. Um, even though I know it's bad for myself, for my personal health, and it's bad for the climate. I like the taste of meat, so I still eat it. Can we solve this? Yeah, we can solve this. Now you have companies like Impossible Foods or Beyond Meat that make plant-based meat. And their audience is not vegetarians. They try to target meat. They want to mimic the meat experience. And if they do, if they succeed in that, they can offer me a product that is as good as meat, but without the downsides for my health and for the climate. And even though these companies are in the beginning of their cycle, they're getting traction. Like Burger King is working with Impossible Foods. This is giving them scale and traction. You can buy their products in supermarkets now. So if these guys grow further and if their quality keeps increasing, they can solve this trade-off. What is the trade-off in your industry? And how can you solve that? I don't know, Laura, I'm, go I'm going to give the word back to you because I would really like to know how you look at this and if you have some cool examples of insurance companies that are really trying to change the world. I'm, I'm very curious to hear your examples. Right on, Stephen. This is actually one of the things that most makes me proud to be a part of this industry. I believe organizations in our sector are destined to play a key role in helping to solve some of the biggest challenges of our times. Things like climate change, healthcare, crumbling infrastructure, inequality, and more. But to make a difference, you don't have to change the whole world. Instead, focus on changing your world, using your organization's unique strengths. Because here's the thing, the same technologies that are helping insurers 
flip the playbook from a focus on products to becoming partners in life are already playing a central role in creating positive change. Take Sundial from State Farm. It's a mobile app and Alexa skill that helps older adults live independently while remaining connected to family and friends who are part of the user's care circle. Through a central hub, these users can do quick check-ins, coordinate tasks, and manage daily activities and appointments collaboratively. When you consider that every last baby boomer will be over the age of 65 within the next nine years, it's easy to see how this kind of connected service can make a real difference in people's lives. Another case in point, Nationwide's Make Safe Happen, a mobile app that helps parents make their homes safer for kids. Today, injuries are the number one cause of childhood death, more than homicide, suicide, and cancer combined. Not only does this app feature safety information based on the specific age of your children, it also includes room-by-room -room safety checklists and links to buy products best suited for the features of your home. And then there's the Fair Plan, an insurance pool run by California-based carriers to do collectively what none of them could do on their own. Through a unique collaboration, these insurers provide fire coverage to property owners unable to get it otherwise. It very well may have made a big difference to some property owners impacted by the catastrophic blazes that have ravaged California in recent weeks. Whatever the nature of your initiative, the rise of big data, machine learning, and predictive analytics, similar to the kind you get with Guidewire, can help ensure smarter, science-based decisions. For example, let's say another state wanted to set up their own FAIR plan. The tech we've been talking about in this video session could be used to continuously analyze microclimates throughout the state, assess, and even predict fire risk over time, and tap satellite imagery and other sources to identify preventative measures property owners and local officials could take to minimize or avoid losses posed by fire. The possibilities are endless, and so are the opportunities to step in and step up to change your world by making a difference for your customers and their communities. Wow, cool stuff, Laura. Fantastic to hear all these stories, and, and great to hear how proud and excited you are to be working in the insurance industry. Um, I'm, I'm going to round off our conversation, our talk, and you know, we, we live in this strange year, and this is a year where new customer behavior and new customer expectations are being formed. And my invitation to all of you is try to create an offer customers can't refuse. And the truth is, in the old world, the minimum demand to be successful was having a good product and a good service and a good price. Today, that has changed. Today, digital convenience is part of that new minimum. It's part of what people expect, and it's just yeah, a basic offering these days. So the differentiation is in the two dimensions that Laura and me just discussed. How can you become a partner in life? How can you add value to society? And if you combine both, you create an offer people can't refuse. And just ask yourself on these four components, these four elements, how far up are you? Where do you need to invest more? Where are you doing a great job and where can you double down on? That's the homework that I would like to give all of you. And I would like to end with this open invitation, my favorite customer experience quote. Dare to dream. Dare to dream about the perfect customer experience. And then reverse engineer it back to today and try to build the best possible customer experience to win the heart and the business of your customers and to give them an offer they cannot refuse. I would like to thank all of you for watching this session. And I hope to see you again in real life really, really soon.